I'm Ian Twombly, and today we are in Charleston, West Virginia at Marshall University. And Marshall is a relatively new aviation program, and they're using an Airbus H125 for transition training. But of course, that's expensive for students. So to offset some of that cost, improve training efficiency, they've partnered with Loft Dynamics, a company that's new to the US and hoping to make waves through virtual reality simulation. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. But really, what is unique about this, it is the equivalent of a full flight simulator. The motion platform has six degrees of motion, which is what's required, for example. What makes this unique is the virtual reality aspect inside of the help and mounted display. When you do that, especially with the level of graphics that you'll see inside of the headset, it generally turns it into a genuinely transformative, immersive experience. And when you do that, as well, remember those big visuals that are required, especially for helicopter simulators, that add so much weight and cost. That's what allows this to be a much more, uh, frankly, manageable footprint, and as well, it genuinely reduces the cost point to something that's much more affordable, frankly. So you're getting, I like to say, it's full flight simulator quality inside an FTD size and price point. Having a simulator such as this, that is not only fully replicates the cockpit to basically the regulated requirements, is an invaluable training tool for operators who need to have their crews trained to the utmost level. And when you do it in an environment that is so realistic and so immersive, you get away from that attitude of thinking, oh, this is just a simulator. You start feeling that this is the real thing. And you start getting an emergency where you start feeling yourself getting tense and start you know, literally sweating because it starts becoming very real. And you're doing an emergency procedure training under that. That's training, frankly, that any of us want to have as a professional aviator. Uh, this is a full one uh, scale replica cockpit. Um, all the instruments and stuff are here, but as you can all see, there's no actual vis visual representation of them. It basically looks like cutouts with QR codes on them. Once you put on the head, uh, heads up display or head mounted display, it's gonna project not only all the instruments, or it's gonna project both the instruments and the environment. So we can do zero viz, uh, IMC, whatever we want, uh, as well as all of your gauges. All right, so we are coming up by increasing the vertical speed here in three, two, one. So you'll notice that FLI gauge is starting to increase. There you go. I'm gonna do a little pedal turn here to coordinate you down the runway. There you go, that's probably pretty good. All right, feeling good? Yeah, I feel good. All right, cool. So I'm gonna roll you down the runway. We're gonna get nose over and just focus all the way at the end of the runway, all right? So you're going okay. over in three, two, one. Nose is going over. And you're gonna start feeling some air. Notice on the, your dash here, your clock is moving. I'm changing what time it is and the position of the sun. Oh, so you yeah. see the shadows going? Wave yeah. your hand in front of a sunspot there. Like maybe your left hand. Wow. Yeah, you're, uh, you'll get like the, the actual shadow. Yeah, you're, uh, anyways. <laughs> we can go full dark here as well. There you go, nighttime. Pretty wild. All right, anyways, we're back. It's VFR, it's a beautiful day. But how do you feel up there? How does it feel? It's amazing. It's <laughs> just, I mean, the ability to look and... Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, you can load up an ILS and shoot the ILS into burn right there to runway 14. Anything close to the airport here, including this area, is HD, so the level of detail is a lot higher than just outside of it. So this is where we recommend doing any hover practice, low level, auto rotations, because uh, your depth perception is a lot better. There you go, nice. And now it's gonna get into the ground effect. And you're landing on grass, so we've got the grass surface motion. There you go. <laughs> nice and hard. Yeah, uh, that was pretty good. It's reusable, not bent. Wow. Those lenses that are over his pupils are actually tracking the exact position of, uh, as to which where Ian is looking. So like if huh. you throw a student into IMC and he keeps, you know, banking right or falling, you can basically analyze his, his scan and see, oh, you're fixated on your, on your climb and your power, but you never once looked at your attitude indicator. There you go. Whoop. Stay Come steady on, with it. Right pedal. Oh. <laughs> right pedal, right pedal, right pedal, right pedal. The other right pedal. There you go. 
Uh, so uh, I had zero rotorcraft experience coming into this uh, job and then through working uh, basically in the Southern California region, I've made some contacts and a few of them have their own A-stars. And um, basically I have maybe, I'm gonna just guess about 100 hours in the simulator. Mm -hmm. And I've been invited to fly with some of these individuals and I've been able to pick the aircraft uh, up into a hover, take off, land, do slope landings. We've landed on mountaintops, we've landed uh, in riverbeds, uh, landed on, on helipads. Uh, and again, that's with zero actual time. I only have a start time from this simulator. Um, and they passed me the controls. Obviously, he didn't pass me the controls on the ground at first. First, he took off, gave it to me. We were doing uh, straight and level flying and turning and stuff through some canyons. And then we did some low approaches, and those looked stable. And then, uh, then yeah, then we started doing actual takeoffs and landings from the ground, uh, from the ground to the ground. Uh, and it all translates from this machine to the actual aircraft. So we get it up to like 60, 70, and then pull the nose up and get a good climb going. That is incredible. The visuals are just unbelievable. Do you feel capable of uh, just giving us a wave, taking one of your hands off the controls and just waving at the camera or at us? There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. If you want, you can roll the collective off and feel what that feels like, just off and on. It's yeah. Just, yeah, there's just idle in flight, so just go to idle and then, uh, okay. you know, for autos, you roll it off and just collect to the floor and just yeah. pitch, for, pitch for RPM. And, then you can either take it to the ground, but I wouldn't recommend that at first. Yeah. Um, just power back on and recover. Collective down to the floor. You are eight mic uniform, clear for the option. We got emergency services on standby. That's the overskate, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. See, I don't think I'm gonna make the runway. Just trade some airspeed, so nose yeah. up. There you go. And then add a little collective. Just do a power recovery sense. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh. Cool. <laughs> That's amazing. Right. I'm gonna do one more of those. Uh, another thing is, so on the collective, top left under that red guard is the hydraulic switch. Okay. Click that off, you get a hydraulic failure. Uh, I would do it under 90 knots, so right now is fine. Be ready for a kick, and then just flick it back on when you want your assistance. But yeah, flick it off, and you're gonna. Oh, yep. <laughs> there you go. So I've been trying hydraulic wow. failure auto, autos lately. It's hard. <laughs> but yeah, that's like a situation that probably wouldn't happen and it's too dangerous to train in the real aircraft, yeah. but you could train it in this. But you got your little enunciation there for your hydraulic system on the panel there. I mean, yep. it's, it's got everything, so. That's incredible. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, well, you can just imagine for instrument training how effective it is. It's like wearing, it's like being in the, you know, if this, it's like being in the helicopter with foggles on. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. you wouldn't well, know the difference. Yeah. I mean, not even foggle. Like it's, you're going to, if I put you on IMC, there's no, you know, peeking yeah. underneath and looking out the side. It's yeah. you're in zero viz or whatever I set it to. And you can set different layers. So you could, you know, put five different fog layers in and have the lowest one break out at minimums on an approach. Like I shoot the RNAV into Burbank or the ILS into Burbank all the time. There you go. So aim for like 70 knots, I think they say. Okay. So a little nose up and then just control the RPM with the collective. Yeah. The airport's directly behind you. If you're to make yep. a right, you got it. really it. drops off fast. Yep. There it goes. I'll keep it tighter to the right. We'll go over your right shoulder and find it. There, there it is. There you go, yeah. Uh, your low RPM. And now I'm dead. Up. No, <laughs> no, you're not. You're still going. You'll die. It'll, it'll stop if, it, if it you will. die. It will, okay. Yeah, so just pitch the nose up a little bit. Get some air through the rope. Good, nice. Yeah, it'll stop. All right, I'll try a full down. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. So add a little collective, just to add a little collective and nose up. Add a little collective. You can glide over those treetops. There you go. There you go. Now, there you go. Collect it back or cycle it back. Get some air through. Flare, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There you go. Let it come down, let it come down. There you go, you're gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you make it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you can see it's like my face is sweating, this thing is full of sweat, and I really, especially at the end, I did that full down auto and rolled it at the end, you know, and it's like, it's, 
it's a little traumatizing. I'm like, holy cow. It's, it, and then you take it off and you're like, oh, it's a beautiful day outside and I'm sitting on the ground. It's incredibly immersive. It's unbelievable, really. Um, I was a little worried I'd get sick. Uh, I've never done VR before. It felt totally natural. Um, I, f you know, there's a little bit of sort of wagging around, but that's also kind of helicopter flying, right? Um, that happens a lot. So I, I don't really have any experience in an A star, um, but I feel like with enough experience doing this, you could really transition really easily. It's fascinating. I mean, and so to take this off and not be sitting in the helicopter is jarring because it felt like I was. Um, it is really by far the most immersive sim I've ever used. It is, it's, it's amazing.